hello, good morning. Um, today we have a new webinar and welcome to our sixth session of Expert Talk. And uh, let me share my screen to go further. Let me see. <clears throat> Here you see today we have our Expert Talk six, uh, session number six. And today is about practical agile methodologies to realize your 2021 business goals with your remote team. And I hope everybody is signing in and settling so we can go further. Today, let me see, I go to the next screen. Yes, you, since I'm talking, yes. Are there already people in them, Mayan? Oh, let me see. Mm, because I'm full screen sharing, yeah, there they are. Yes, they're coming in. Welcome, everybody. <laughs> Now, you see two people here on the screen, and uh, I'm Marianne Stoyt, a sales and recruitment manager at Undutchables. And um, uh, Undutchables, of course, uh, specialize in internationals who are looking for a job in the Netherlands. And uh, I'm happily working here already for 20 years and uh, looking for new clients uh, to work with. And uh, of course, we organize now and then an expert talk. And today we have our guest speaker. And maybe it's nice to introduce yourself, Yo. Um, so go ahead. <laughs> yes, thank you, Marjan. Thanks for having me. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Yo Gelok. I um, am a change manager with my business, uh, Red Value. I help organizations in um, change and improvements on the cutting edge of processes, people, and uh, systems. Um, and uh, I help them in translating their uh, business objectives to uh, practical uh, steps to uh, projects, in it, initiatives, solutions, and, uh, and ways of working to actually uh, get things uh, done and, and reach the objectives. So therefore, I'm invited to uh, do this uh, expert talk today, and uh, I'm very happy to be here. Thank you. Okay, very good. Let's go to the program of today. Uh, first, uh, an introduction by me, then we go further with the interactive session, and then a wrap up and the Q&A. So you can ask questions in the Q&A, and in the end of the session, we will uh, go through them. Uh, so maybe it's good now to start with my introduction. And uh, remote working, yeah, the way uh, organizations think and operate is uh, radically changing. And uh, people are in the center of this change. HR teams uh, are fundamental to achieving greater levels of organizational agility and therefore to companies surviving and thriving. But they need to radically rethink the way things have been done for years and embrace the new agile mindset. Um, the value of remote working now and after the crisis. Yeah, remote working is an opportunity for companies to change their way of working sustainably and re-app the benefit of over the medium to long-term. Think of less office space, less commuting, fewer business trips, shorter breaks and greater focus for employees. Feedback from the market uh, seems to indicate that remote workers are also less likely to have uh, to take short absences due to illness. It can also have a positive impact on the remuneration system of companies and provide insight to HR opportunities. Remote working on a larger scale also offers companies the flexibility to deal with unexpected events in the future, such as COVID-19 crisis. Finally, remote working can give a renewed boost to cooperation and cohesion. Investing in remote working will have a far reach consequences on the way we work after the crisis. It's too early to say to what extent we will not go back to the old way of working, but business leaders should already think about new operation model based on a higher flexibility and more agile and remote ways of working. So remote working is here to stay and we will more than ever become an integral part of the way we work. Now it's the time for companies to prepare to, for this back to the new normal. This webinar gives a practical, uh, practical overview of how you can use the Agile philosophy for translating your 2021 plans and strategies to your teams working from home. Keep up the team spirit, togetherness, and agility is the key in these challenging times. By using Agile methodologies like Scrum, Kanban, this will support um, to keep focus on results of 
or even accelerate reaching your objectives while keeping your people involved and motivated. I now give the word to Jo, who is the change in program manager and owner of Red Value, and she will explain more how agile methodologies and agile ways of working can make remote working successful. So let me yes, stop thanks. sharing my screen. <laughs> yes, here we I go. Share mine. <clears throat> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, works now. Put it in presentation mode. Yes. So as Marianne explained, um, I will uh, give you some highlights on the agile way of working and how that can also work uh, remotely. Um, well, we're counting down to the new year and we're setting new objectives. Uh, it's been a year, quite a year. And, um, but how to plan for these unpredictable times and how to make sure that you uh, get the right objective set and uh, to get keep people involved, uh, especially when we are, we are expecting people to stay working remotely and the teams are not connected uh, physically. Um, and um, maybe now in these times, it's even more than ever uh, important to get people uh, on board uh, and to get them involved in the, in the setting of the objectives and to really let them feel that they're uh, adding, uh, adding to these objectives and um, have a sense of uh, purpose there. Um, like described in the invitation, um, in this webinar, we'll elaborate on how you can use Azure methodologies to uh, translate organizational objectives to practical steps, which is understandable for your teams, yeah. how to prioritize projects and initiatives, how to make progress on structural changes, uh, even when day-to-day -day activities are busy and unpredictable, uh, and how to keep track of the progress and maintain connection in the team. And of course, also how to get, uh, keep your stakeholders on board. Uh, Agile is mainly focused on breaking down projects in steps. Uh, actually, then you already know what you want to do. And then it's more a way of, uh, of breaking it down and to add uh, value in an incremental way. Uh, so actually Agile is not, uh, fully covering the setting of the objectives. And therefore, uh, I will take you through uh, a way of goal setting first, which actually matches uh, the Agile way of working uh, perfectly. Um, but first, we will start with a small poll. Yes. And um, because we're very curious about where you stand in uh, setting your objectives for 2021. Um, so the first question is, did you already define your company objectives for 2021? Mayan? I will relaunch the polling. Yes. So I hope you can see the question. Did you already define your company objectives for 2021? Yes, working on it or no? I see everybody's filling it in. I'll wait a couple of more seconds. Oh, percentages go up and down. Yes, I will end the polling now and share the results. Okay, um, can you, uh, are now viewing? Yes, now you see 15% yes, uh, 96 working on it, and 50% no. So, what do you think, Joe? <laughs> Yeah, I think um, you, there are a lot of companies that already start uh, making the plans for, uh, for the new year in September, um, but especially um, defining the goals to, uh, to, the next, uh, to the next levels that is often uh, later in the process. So and that sometimes even takes up to March. So um, I think uh, this is, uh, yeah, not surprising that they're not fi all finished yet at least <laughs> and it's a crazy time so uh, it's also a real challenge to, to set the goals um yeah so uh, let's uh, let's move on to the to the to the next question uh, yeah. at least based on this i hope i can help you in uh, in giving some uh, some nice uh, tips uh, what you can include in your uh, in your goal setting for the next year 
second question. Yes. Yeah. Do you want me to read it? <clears throat> uh, no, yeah, yeah, sorry, I will. Are you confident about the approach on how to reach your 2021 goals, considering the pandemic and the remote working? Okay, I will launch the poll. Here we go. Yes. <laughs> So the answers are yes, we are adapting well to the new situation, not fully, no, it's challenging. I will wait a few more seconds. Yeah. And then end the polling. Yeah, it's oh, it's still moving a little bit. Yeah, there's one. Ready? Uh, we go. End. Yes. Okay. Yes. So uh, it's, share it's the results. Quite positive. Quite positive. Still, uh, there's one uh, one answer uh, which is quite challenging, um, but um, yeah, it's uh, the the there's almost half of uh, of the answers are uh, we adapted well to the new situation, so that's good to hear, um, and, uh, and the rest is not yet uh, fully uh, confident. Half half. Um, yeah. Yeah, so let's, shall we move on? Yes, I stopped sharing the results. Yes. Very good. Okie doke. Okay, I will also move on. So uh, then we uh, continue. Yes. What do goals and Christmas trees have in common? Well, actually not much. No. But I could have put a triangle in here and I thought, since we're uh, heading up to Christmas, it's nice to use a Christmas tree. Um, but um, the point I want to make is that um, what you see often is that the company mission and vision are translated down to the uh, company strategy and objectives. And then it's drilling down uh, every time a little bit lower into the organization, uh, which um, uh, is, is uh, um, logical because there is then a link between the, the top objectives and the team objectives. Um, however, it's, it's important that they are linked but, uh, and that they add up to the bigger picture and that they add to a sense of purpose so that people know what they're uh, uh, working for. But cascading down goals and targets should not be a goal in itself. And um, that is because um, then you also have a chance or the, the risk that the things that are important in the departments, that those are not covered in the objectives. So uh, it's good to, to link it, but it shouldn't be um, all cascaded down. And especially since that is a very timely process because uh, once you finish with the first set of targets or and objectives, you translate it and then you translate it. And then sometimes it's like, I said, maybe even March before the teams know uh, what they're actually uh, going for in the year. And that's a waste of time. And it takes, uh, it's, it's, it's a pity because uh, you have to stay flexible in these, uh, in these crazy times. So um, what, um, what do we, we want to do? We want to be more than ever uh, adaptive to change, focus on employee engagement. Uh, togetherness and team spirit. And with remote working, we need um, the employee to feel a sense of purpose in chasing the goals, and it should be it should inspire them uh, to be mo and to be uh, motivated. So, uh, defining inspiring, uh, it's important to define inspiring and ambitious goals, and um, this is uh, actually key to uh, to success because uh, a lot of research has proved that uh, setting goals lead to higher uh, productivities in most situations. It's about 95% of the situations. Um, specific and difficult goals lead to higher performance. Uh, the, the more um, tight the deadlines are, the more rapid the work pace is, uh, and the looser the deadlines are, the, the um, lower the work pace is. Uh, making public commitment to a goal enhances employee engagement and goal setting helps teams to see their contribution to the organization, which adds to employee happiness and productivity. 
So uh, to, re to really be successful with your organization, it's important to set uh, inspiring and ambitious goals. But another finding on research is also that uh, most people are not capable of translating the objectives to what they actually need to do to reach them. So uh, therefore, um, uh, I'm, uh, I will uh, help you uh, give some tips how, uh, how that translation can be done. Um, and there are like two methodologies that I am going to explain to you in this, uh, in this webinar. Uh, the first one is the OKR methodology and the Azure way of working, as I explained before. Um, and uh, these two in combination um, support to accelerate realizing goals and stay adaptive to change. Mm -hmm. So then uh, we have another poll question. All right. Are you familiar with the OKR methodology of setting goals? Okay, here we go. OKR. A couple more seconds. Is it moving? I one, two, three. And the polling. Yes. Share the results. Here we go. Yes, we work with OKR. 7%, yes, I'm familiar with it. 20, no, 73%. Okay, yes. there's a lot to explain, Jo. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's good because otherwise I could have uh, skipped <laughs> some information. So it's good, I'm, uh, I'm elaborating on it. So, uh, so uh, I, can, uh, I can continue there. Okay. So OKR stands for Objectives and Key Results. And it's um, introduced to actually uh, connect organizational objectives to measurable results. I, I think most people have heard about uh, goal setting and target setting that it should be smart. Um, and the part, the important part in smart is that it also should be measurable. Uh, the only thing in, in smart objectives is that it does not mean that it needs to, that, that it per definition are the right objectives. And in the OKR uh, objective settings, actually, um, that is actually covered. So um, it enables understanding of the objectives and gives a purpose to the people throughout the organization. It's ideal for fast changing environments and markets. Uh, it enables uh, flexibility and adaptiveness to change. So mm -hmm. the goals are not set for the full year. Uh, you don't have to plan too much ahead. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is a methodology that's used in companies like Google, Amazon, Facebook, Netflix, LinkedIn, Spotify, and Samsung. <coughs> so it's, uh, it's quite uh, in, in, in organizations where also Azure way of working is, uh, is um, used often. Um, so just a quick uh, overview of how that's been done. Uh, you start with the mission and the vision of the company, then um, you have annual objectives and shouldn't be too much, like high level uh, annual objectives. Um, those are uh, translated to uh, what, what should you uh, do in, in the different quarters. And then uh, also you have like three to four uh, quarterly objectives. And there it, uh, it uh, becomes more, um, uh, yeah, practical, because then uh, all the objectives should be translated to key results. And that is actually, okay, how do we measure or, or what, what do we want to reach? And those are measurable key results. So um, may, that, that it, then it will become more practical because uh, you have to really think of translating an objective to um, how you can measure it. Okay. And after that, you will uh, uh, set up actually the list of to do's, how to, to get to that result. So yeah. the, the initiatives are um, the way how to reach this. Okay. And uh, this is all not fixed. It should be uh, amended throughout the process and uh, especially to remain flexibility. So where do the OKR sit in the, in the organization, they have the mission and the vision and the strategy and the OKRs 
uh, can be uh, developed and it can be developed in the different departments and uh, it should uh, as i as i showed in the previous picture link to the to the mission and the vision um, so then there is this link but it's not a cascading down uh, the objective should give direction, be inspiring and be clear to everyone. Even people without, uh, outside of the organization should understand what, what it is. So it should really be inspiring and something to chase for. Um, they also should be ambitious because um, yeah, uh, a higher goal, people are more likely to work uh, towards that. And, um, and that gives a more... Um, fun feeling also if you if you really have to to work with it to, to work it together mm -hmm. uh, the key results should be measurable ambitious and influenceable and the initiatives uh, should be specific and controllable and the initiatives uh, that those are like projects tasks um, to do but can also be uh, like day-to-day -day work um, well, if most people are not capable of translating goals into actions, like I explained before, how do you get to the right actions and initiatives? Mm -hmm. um, well, there, this is actually where, um, where Agile also comes in. Uh, of course, uh, as I explained before, the, the key results, because those are measurable results, uh, it already gives a, a hint of how it will be measured. So it's more, um, clear which buttons to push to, to get there. Um, so the teams actually just make up a list with to-dos. Okay, if I have to reach this object, this key result, if, I, if we have to influence this result, what should we do? And then you list all the to-dos. And um, um, yeah, so that is, um, that is actually the, the part here. Um, and um, yeah, then of course the question is how to structure the initiatives, how to keep everybody on board, how to keep track of the progress. And um, there uh, we go and uh, work, uh, use Agile to, to, to get it done as well. Exactly. So my first poll, the next poll question is, is your organization already working Agile? All right, here we go. Yes. Here we go. Yes, mainly in IT department. We are considering it no agile. What is it? It's not a new necklace. It's not a new ring. It's... <laughs> yes, let's yeah. end the polling. I will share the results. 29% yes, uh, mainly in IT development, 21%. We are considering it 7%, no, 43%. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that is, uh, you often see that, uh, that it's in IT, sometimes also in marketing, but not much further in the organization. Uh, there are a few organizations where it's uh, been, uh, um, introduced all the way through but often it's uh, it's uh, starting it's uh, starting in the in IT uh, it's also originated from IT so from uh, from development so uh, but you see that it's been uh, embraced by more departments and uh, wider into organizations uh, currently yeah so i will um, i will uh, go through how you can also use the agile way of working in uh, like other teams than development teams and also in teams which have uh, just day-to-day -day, uh, work which is quite reactive um, because you actually always have like some some uh, initiatives that actually add to structural improvements so you there's in in most departments you see that there are projects uh, things that you actually have to build up to 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 get to a result and uh, those uh, activities are especially important to, to uh, cover in, in an agile way of working. And um, even maybe even more if you also have um, very high day-to-day -day, uh, work pressure, 
because then you tend to um, yeah to move that away if you're not clear on deadlines and you don't have a clear structure and how to uh, tackle that. So yeah. I will I will um, talk you through that as well. Um, Yes, so a quick overview of the Agile principles. It uh, might be uh, familiar to uh, you, but uh, I think uh, it's good to also for the people who haven't seen this before uh, to show uh, what it is about. Um, Agile is a philosophy and an approach to create and respond to change. The Agile Manifesto, uh, which actually has 12 points, uh, 12 uh, sentences which are, are key in Agile, but uh, it consists of four core values, and I will explain those. Uh, individuals and interactions over processes and tools. And what this actually says is that the, the individual, uh, the contact with the individual uh, where um, actually there were, there were was talked about human resources uh, previously. Actually, in in agile, the word resource. If you talk to, uh, if you talk about people, that's actually not done. So you, they really get back to the personal uh, way of working, um, cross-functional teams, and face-to-face -face contact. So uh, try to prevent to to work too much in silos and and and. Um, people uh, taking common, uh, uh, shared responsibility for the results. Uh, and this is where it uh, is challenging with remote work, of course, because the face-to-face -face contact is now not, um, not uh, that easy anymore, of course, via screen. But the idea with, uh, behind Agile was actually that you're together on the same floor. You probably have seen team standing in front of a board uh, talking together and that's actually a thing that that is really a very important part of agile but uh, i have experienced in the past year that it's quite uh, possible to uh, to also implement this in a, in an online way of working and especially for teams that uh, were not working agile um, working agile uh, remotely via via Video uh, calling actually adds to the team uh, team uh, feeling uh, over uh, working as you did before because you don't um, walk into each other uh, per accident anymore. So yeah. keep it aligned like that. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> um, so the second one is working software over comprehensive documentation. Well, there you see it's really originating from software development. Uh, but the idea behind this is that actually you you deliver something that is 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 uh, something and it, you don't uh, spend too much time on gathering requirements, doing research. Uh, that, like previously in in waterfall projects took like a year, and now it's like continuously adding increments of value. See if it works, and if it doesn't, then. Uh, uh, change it, modify it, and and, uh, and go back uh, go back to improve, and uh, that's that's the, the that's the key uh, um, value in this. And then customer collaboration over contract negotiation, and there it's also like involve your your uh, customers, and in case of you, that your customer is like internal, then in, involve your uh, stakeholders uh, build on incremental steps, uh, ask feedback, and, and uh, continuously learn and improve. And um, uh, then the last one is continuously responding to change over following a plan. And especially um, that is, uh, is uh, very much uh, agile. Uh, I have been working in teams where, where the Agile transformation was ongoing and then I heard things like in Agile we don't plan and it's, but of course you have budgets, you have uh, time constraints so there will always be some sort of plan and there the OTR is very much matching because you create a plan but you stay uh, adaptive to change and, uh, and flexible um, but the idea so if you're too rigid and say yeah. we don't work with plans, then uh, yeah, I think you uh, you will miss the part of actually being really successful because you're not you don't know what you're chasing for. So it's uh, it should be uh, somehow uh, result oriented. Exactly. 
Um, so, and the, the, the thing here in Agile is that you focus on breaking down projects in small goals while adding new goals. So that is, uh, that is where the flexibility um, is in. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> then um, both OPR and Agile are about transparency, continuously adding value, autonomous teams deciding on the how and focus, discipline, and continuous improvement. So this is really, uh, th there are a lot of uh, similarities be between OKR and Agile. Um, now the goals are defined and the to-dos are listed. The question is how to get it done. And the Agile philosophy will support in making this a success. And the most important uh, thing, uh, or the, the most uh, famous uh, methodology in Agile is Scrum. And this really helps to uh, structurally add value. Okay. Um, compared to OKR, um, it is similarly important in Agile to have clear and measurable outcome. Um, so it's more, uh, but it's on a lower level, more in the in the activities itself. The how to get there is free for the teams to decide. So that's a really important thing. So people know what they're what they're they have to deliver, and and how to get there. That is up to the team. So then I will go talk you through the Scrum framework. Yeah. And I'll have a look at the time also. Uh, we have ten thirty. <laughs> yeah, we're good. Yes. Um, so the Scrum uh, process is about delivering incremental value in sprint cycles. Okay. And uh, the sprint cycle is what uh, is visualized here. Um, the, uh, the sprint cycle is about one to four weeks. I actually really love the two week cycle because it's uh, short enough to uh, not have any space for Slack. And it's, a, it's a two, a one week is just too small. Uh, so it's big enough to actually make progress. Um, and every sprint, something ready is delivered. And yeah. here on the right hand side, you see the potential shippable product increment that is also um, from the agile uh, IT development uh, um, so that is, that is something that is done and is working. But if you're, for instance, in HR or in marketing, uh, it can also be like uh, the, first, uh, the first version of a plan, uh, like the, the, the setup of a market research. Uh, yeah. I don't know. It's, performance so, plan. Yeah. Performance plan. Uh, it, it's, uh, but the idea is that you, that you set an objective for the sprint with the team and that you um, list all the activities that add to that objective and that you together take the responsibility for getting that result done in the two weeks. And uh, sometimes you have teams where people really have different uh, ways of working. And then, I, um, then you can still split that and have different objectives, but um, then still sharing it together gives the, the team feeling and people can still ask, oh, how, how are you proceeding with your objectives? So it's, I think it's a really helpful uh, part to get teams uh, aligned and, uh, and, and improve the team feeling. Yeah. Um, one important thing in the, in the Scrum framework is that team members must attend the sprint ceremonies. Uh, so, um, and the sprint ceremonies are the agile meetings during the sprint, and I will uh, elaborate on that a little bit more later in the, in the presentation. So, uh, when we had the, the triangle of uh, which uh, on the bottom had the initiatives, the projects, and the, the actions, um, how to decide what should be done first, and that is actually covered in agile. Because in Agile, you work with a backlog, and the backlog is, uh, is listing uh, everything that is valuable uh, and adds up to the key results and objectives. So uh, if you think there is something um, that might be an idea, but probably not going to work on it for the coming year, please don't put it on the backlog. It's not a list of everything you can imagine to do to help the organization. It should really be 
things that are uh, logical to add up to, to your objectives. Uh, and the backlog is ordered and uh, the ordering um, can be done in uh, several ways, um, but it's often done by scoring on relevant factors. And I will uh, elaborate on that a little bit more later. So um, what actually uh, the idea of the backlog is, is that uh, you strive to first do the things that add the most value with the least amount of effort, time and money. Yeah. Because um, if you, uh, yeah, then you add, add the most value with the least, uh, the least pain. So that, that is uh, on top. Uh, of course, you can score also on uh, different things. So th this is now like impact uh, in, in time and money and uh, business value. You can also score on uh, time criticality or risk to say, OK, uh, if you uh, have to implement um, a new regulation or something, yeah, of course, then there's a risk if you don't do it. So then uh, the, it ranks higher on the backlog uh, immediately. So it's uh, there you can, uh, for your own organization, you can decide which factors are important in ranking and um, that there's a methodology for that as well. And that's called WSJF and it's weighted shortest job first. And then uh, you score all the initiatives on these factors that you determined were important to score on. So uh, which factors are critical for correct ordering, you score them on them, and then uh, you uh, see which item comes where on the backlog. Um, this is really, uh, if you have an agile implementation, um, it, it's really a way how, to, how you can do that. Um, but if you're more likely to just use Scrum to get the team together, I would suggest to maybe forget about this because often you uh, if you think of okay how how can we make sure that uh, we first do the things that add the most value then teams are often quite capable of ordering this so only in if you have really large backlogs if there's a lot of money involved especially also in IT development then it's really important to have a right scoring mechanism because they have demand from from throughout the whole organization yeah understandable <clears throat> so uh you might you it, it, you can decide to forget about this if this not concerns you um well what makes working in sprints most valuable is that everybody knows what the objective for sprint is and how and when to reach the result and um there um i think that is that is one of the yeah, that is one of the key things also in, in working remotely because these people um, have, yeah, they're working from home. Everybody knows what their work is, but if you have, together have a goal for the coming two weeks, it really helps uh, connecting the team and, um, yeah. and, um, and get together. Uh, it's also important for stakeholders because you can really, um, do expectation management towards your stakeholders and tell them, okay, in the coming two weeks, we're going to pick this up. But this also requires preparation up front. So it requires some discipline because everybody needs to think of what, what are we going to do in the coming two weeks? Uh, what should we have prepared before it? Uh, how can we make sure that the stakeholders that actually we are depending on also are ready by that time um, that we are going to work on it? And that is sometimes challenging in organizations that are not fully uh, um, uh, transformed to agile way of working, that some teams that are and other teams are not, that they are depending uh, from each other and that they're not uh, in sync with each other. So that, um, that is the, then the most challenging thing. However, if people learn to proactively think, okay, when am I planning to do that? And you take your stakeholders in that, you can make agreements on the things that you need to uh, to get uh, to get your objectives done in the sprint. So this is really requires some uh, some practice and and, and um, also persistence. Uh, so yeah, it's it's a focus and discipline as well. So I will continue with the sprint ceremonies. Um, 
how does a sprint cycle work? Well, you have this project product back backlog. So as I explained before, ordered mm -hmm. with the most important things on top. Um, then there is a sprint planning up front to every sprint. Uh, there, um, the team is going to pick work from the backlog and are going to plan it in the sprint. They are looking at how much work time do I have in the coming two weeks. If you're on holiday for two, two days, then uh, you should pick less work from the list than if you're not. Um, so really size the work. Uh, all the items should be described as uh, work that can be done in one to two days. So all the deliverables should be uh, split in sub deliverables and sub results and uh, always um, explain it as a, as a result. Um, and uh, you prepare the spring backlog. And that's actually the pile of work that you're going to do in the coming two weeks. And you shouldn't uh, change that during this sprint. And of course, if there's a lot of reactive day-to-day -day work, which is actually your job, then um, you should account for that time. And then you, for instance, say, okay, we take uh, three hours a day to work on structural things that, uh, that we work on work from the backlog. And the other time we spend on uh, the day-to-day -day activities, which is actually our day-to-day -day job. So I believe this can also be implemented in teams that are not uh, only developing things, but uh, are also um, or planning things, but are also in day-to-day uh, -day activities. Uh, and it gives focus, and it gives structure, and it and it gives. Uh, a nice sense of purpose to add to structural improvements. Um, the daily scrum uh, is also called the stand-up. So uh, when the sprint starts, after the sprint planning, the sprint starts, and every day the team comes together, 15 minutes only, and they track the status. So they say, okay, uh, where, what are we uh, working on? Uh, is it is it going well? Are there any impediments? Do you need something from someone in the team? Uh, yes, no, okay. Sometimes it can be done in five minutes. And I've I've seen teams uh, with sixteen people uh, done in in ten minutes and still uh, find each other because you only say, okay, I want to speak to you uh, today because of this. Okay, let's get back on it uh, after the scrum. And that's the challenge here is to not go into detail. Yeah. So, uh, but there's always a small catch up with the team and uh, it gives an opportunity also to catch in uh, separate from the, from the stand up. So it's, it's a nice uh, contact moment with the whole team. Um, and as I said, it's really important that the team always attends all these events. Uh, then there is the sprint review and it's also called demo. Um, and that's a presentation of the sprint deliverables. And I ex uh, especially say presentation because in uh, software development, it's really a demo of what, what's been built. But uh, for instance, in another team, it can just be a listing what uh, progress has been made. And all the um, stakeholders are invited. Um, they uh, know about it. It's every two weeks they can can join, and it's also good that they show their uh, their um, involvement, and they can give feedback directly, and if uh, and say if if it uh, meets their uh, demands or their uh, their wishes, and uh, then the, the team can uh, can close off the sprint. Then uh, the team comes together in, a new, in another event. And I think this is really important. It's a retrospective. It's really a check-in with the team on the, the personal, uh, uh, yeah, it's really the personal touch. Uh, you evaluate the sprint, but also there's eye for the people in the team. So uh, as I um, usually do it, it's like ask two questions uh, at least, and there are also other uh, methodologies that you can use to check how, how it's going. But there are always two questions that I ask, how are you feeling and how, um, how, is the, how do you feel about the process? And that's just uh, giving a, a, a number, a rank. And um, if your cat died this week, then the, how are you feeling can be really bad but uh, then still the process can be okay. And I think it's also good to 
give an opportunity for people in the team to know uh, if somebody's not doing so well or seems stressed that it might even be a personal situation. So that you also open the, the conversation there. Yeah, especially and, uh, now with remote working, it's nice to give attention to that as yes, well, right? Yes, definitely, definitely. Yeah. So and this, this uh, for me, I've, I've seen this really working well. Uh, I've, I've worked with a team uh, in the first sprint uh, there were like twos, threes, and fours on the scale from one to ten uh, in how they were feeling also about the process. And uh, a sprint later, it was around five. A sprint later, it was around six, seven. And a sprint later, it was about eight. So then we had four sprints, so it was two months. And this whole process actually helped them get more confidence in getting results in setting priorities in getting um, recognition from their stakeholders. It, it really builds up to their, their uh, self-esteem and the, the team, uh, the team uh, uh, feeling. So it really, I, I really believe in this. Mm -hmm. and, um, yeah. That's uh, why I'm uh, telling you about it. Yeah, obviously. So uh, this is actually the same cycle. It's uh, it's only flat. Um, and what I want to uh, point out with this one is that on top you see the the bar with refinement, and the refinement is actually uh, the preparation work that needs to be done before the sprint. So a sprint cannot start if you don't know exactly how what you need to do to reach the objective and uh, that all the preparation is not done. And this is often the pain in teams because people don't like doing this. They don't like to think about it. They don't like to spend time on it and they think it's like homework. And it is like that, but after a while, and therefore it's, it's good to have, if you start doing this, have really somebody taking the scrum master role uh, to, to uh, help the team uh, with the discipline to do this. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. because after a while, they they will experience that it actually helps them and that it gives them space and that they already know ahead what they can expect for the coming weeks. And um, and you also stay flexible to change because every two weeks you can decide what you put into the sprint planning. And that might change like an hour before the sprint planning. You can already um, have to do something else as long as the word is clear. And it also gives a nice uh, way uh, to share with stakeholders like, okay, uh, this is not in in time. You will have to wait for two more weeks. And that might be painful sometimes. So that, yeah, there's, there's of course, uh, uh, also some challenges, but um, once people get used to it, it really works. And how do you uh, go through the work in the standups? That's actually by going through a Kanban board. And uh, actually, everything that is in the sprint backlog will be listed on the to-do. And you also have like the real agile tooling, right? So then uh, there's there you, you drag items into a sprint. Uh, but if you're not uh, like really uh, agile transformed, and this is this is something that all teams can do. Uh, you list everything you're going to do in the two weeks in a to-do and uh, on, in the daily stand-ups you just drag the tickets to doing and done and, and inform the, the team about what, what, um, what's been done. And you can also decide to drag the tickets yourself and not do it in the stand-up, um, but then it's good to point them out in the stand-ups. So, and, and uh, but, yeah, the plan is that everything's done so in the done column uh, by the end of the sprint, exactly. and will be shown to the to the stakeholders. Yeah. So there are tooling that you can use for this uh, Kanban board. There's like many tools. Um, the tool that I think is is really uh, low, um, like really accessible. That's Trello. You can you can decide the columns yourself. You can also put like a column impediment in there and, and, and um, use that. Um, these are free tools. Miro is, is a more extensive tool there. They have like also uh, online uh, whiteboard functionalities and uh, a lot of agile uh, refine or um, 
retrospective tooling uh, or models in there. So it's really nice. And there are many more. So um, I'm, uh, but, but I have experience with these two. Um, and Jira and Asana, and also amongst many others, uh, are tools that uh, when you do an agile transformation that are, can really be used to create tickets, to uh, share them amongst teams. So that's really more project management uh, tool for agile environments. So um, that is uh, on the tooling. Um, so yeah, I want, I want to uh, stress uh, once more that even if you don't uh, work with uh, Agile, the um, retrospective really helps to uh, let the team come together to reflect and learn. So mm -hmm. even if you're not planning to, uh, to work in an Agile way, I think like having a retrospective every once in a while so, and on a structural basis, so every two weeks, for instance, is really uh, good to, um, to, uh, to get the team together. Yeah. Uh, however, if you have a common goal and a shared goal and, and, um, and use your, um, your goals to, uh, to translate them to weekly or to buy to the sprints and the bi-weekly uh, cycles, then uh, you are much more likely to get your objectives uh, reached. So um, a good implementation and adaptation of these methodologies are definitely benefiting to direction and purpose to the team. And that will result in higher productivity and team spirit. So that is uh, what my experience is. And, um, and I'm, uh, I'm curious uh, if you have any uh, questions or... Uh, yeah, let's see. Yeah. I don't see any questions. So please ask them if you like. Um, it's a lot, but if I think, uh, like you said, uh, if you start doing this, then it will really um, help the team to also celebrate all the results and yeah. be aligned and be, yeah, you know, you really can make steps. Um, things in, if you don't have it, then things just happen, but uh, there's not so much. This, you can really follow the pro progress. It's really yeah, amazing. You convinced me. <laughs> and there's a question. Let me see. Um, if I open it. How many organizations use OPR? I'm not sure. I didn't, I didn't do that research. <laughs> But, oh yeah, no, but I know that there are, as I explained, there are a lot of uh, big organizations using it, and um, like the, the the real agile uh, and the, the, the internet uh, like companies, they they have embraced it. So uh, yeah, like Netflix agile, and uh, agile is spreading now. So I think OKR will be something that's spreading uh, spreading more. Yeah. And, more. and since when is OKR on the market? Sorry, I haven't I haven't digged into the details, but <laughs> I, yeah, but I mean just <laughs> I mean just I think they don't want to know that it just or is it recently old already? Um, yeah, I yeah I I would lie if I, I if I guess then uh, it's I mean the whole agile uh, way of working is also uh, originated from the Toyota. Um, uh, from Toyota, so it's quite old uh, because it started with lean and then it evolved in agile. And I think this is some sort of evolved with it because mm -hmm. uh, indeed the, the agile way of working was missing the, the goal setting and the cascading turned out not to not to work. But how old it is, <laughs> I have. I have seen it, but I, I can't yeah. remember. So. We, we park it, we answer yeah. it later. I can answer it later. <laughs> <laughs> and there's another question. Why do you think agile working helps to be more engaged as an employee versus more traditional ways of working? Um, I think it's uh, especially because um, you have a, a shared goal. Uh, and of course, in, in traditional ways of working, it, also sometimes have that, but you don't uh, have the flexibility that the team is actually uh, deciding on how to reach the objectives. So it, it was more likely to have a top-down uh, translation of, okay, uh, this is what, uh, what the management wants us to do, so this is what we think is needed, 
go and achieve it by then. And that was the deadline setting. And now an other way of working is more, okay, this is, this is what we are uh, achieving for the customers or for, yeah, it depends on how your uh, key results are defined. And uh, what do, do the team feel is needed? And um, yeah, so that's more, it's more the team responsibility to really make progress and deliver what the customer wants. Yeah. Uh, there's another question. Thank you. Um, which departments uh, are most suitable for OKR? Um, I think it would be best if, if you would uh, use it throughout the organization, because then um, uh, there's, a, there's a shared way of working, of course, and, and also you make what what you don't want is that there are contradicting goals uh, in uh, in different departments. So um, yeah, you sometimes see that like a sales department and a marketing department have different objectives which they are measured by. But actually, the the idea is the same. You want to have more customers embrace your uh, your uh, product and buy it uh, because that makes the organization more healthy. So. Uh, it's really important that they're aligned uh, among uh, departments. So I believe that it's better to 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 uh, embrace it from the top down. But uh, if that is not the case, then it's good to do that for your own depart department and see uh, whether it matches the the goals of the linking departments and where you can find each other. Yeah. Very good. And another question, really good people. Can you use the agile way of working when you are not working with a team for yourself? Yeah, well, I have for myself, for my business, I have a Kanban board and I just list my to do's there and I plan and then uh, I have like a backlog and uh, what am I planning for this week? And then I, I drag it. Uh, uh, from, from to do to done uh, as well. So yes, it, it, it can be. And, and defining your, your own goals are, is really important. I mean, I always say, if you don't make a plan for your own life, you will be uh, <laughs> uh, planned into other people's plans. So uh, yeah, and that's for teams, but it's also for, for people uh, themselves. Yeah. Would you see a board working in, with via OKR? A board? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. 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 All right. Any more questions? It's almost time. So still some time to ask. Uh, to, uh, hey, what do you yeah, think? Then you... this is uh, any downsides, pitfalls from OKR? Sorry? Are there any downsides, pitfalls from OKR? Um... Well, I, ha uh, I haven't been working in organizations myself that, that, uh, that work with OKRs, but I can imagine that there's still the same risk as the cascading down, that um, the link between the team and the team, uh, like the team knows, okay, we have to do this project because that helps our daily work to improve. And that um, those things should be on 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 the on the targets, so um, or, or on the objectives, and and you still have to make sure that it won't be a cascading down like like uh, yeah. So you you should really ma also make sure that it's that it's from the top linking to the to, from the bottom linking to the to the mission and the vision and. and is really relevant and stays relevant. So I think that's a that's a challenge. Um, yeah. But okay. the downside, yeah, it depends on how you implement it. If, if, if you, I always believe not to be too rigid in methodologies, but see how it fits your organization and how you can make sure you, that you do the right things and keep reflecting on uh, are we still doing the right things? Yeah, and the teams are engaged and having the nose the right yeah. way, and then it's not all yeah. top down. And the yeah, the thing that you want is that teams that say, uh, yeah, the management they think of something new, and first yeah. we have to go that way, now we have to go that way, and 
they don't know what they're talking about because mm -hmm. that is what you see often as well. And the energy is not in there, and yeah. Yeah, yeah. Any more questions? It's, uh, it's 11 o'clock. Thank you very, very much, everybody, for the questions. And thank you for joining this uh, webinar. Hope you really enjoyed it. Uh, of course, we will send an email with the information also from you. And uh, so you can uh, listen to it back. Yeah. Um, no, Joe, thank you very much for attending. Yes, thank you all. Have a good day. Have, Have a good, good day. Yes, thank you very much. Bye. Bye.